The Nigerian government has reiterated its resolve to punish peddlers of fake news and hate speech. And Kogi state politics gets interesting as gubernatorial elections draw near. The deputy governor, Simon Achuba, was impeached despite the panel finding him innocent and the allegations of thugs involved in the ambush of Musawada, the PDP governorship candidate. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. The Nigerian government has restated its stance to punish peddlers of fake news and hate speech. This is coming barely two weeks after the federal government approved the increase of fines from 500,000 to 5 million for breaches relating to hate speeches, inciting comments and indecency. However, several Nigerians have accused the government of planning to use this platform as a means to clamp down on critical views. Joining me to discuss this are two gentlemen. I'll start with Mr. Francis Chilaka, political analyst. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. And of course, we also have Olali Kon Adiku. Thank you very much for joining us, political Thank you analyst. Very much. Pleasure to have you both um, in on the conversation uh, today. Is it a ploy to clamp, clamp down on critical views? Uh, I, think, I think each time this issue of hate speech and fake, fake news comes up, uh, the government has not done its homework well by defining what they mean by hate speech. You know, um, because when you say hate speech, we, we need to go back history. When did it really become an issue in our political life? It started in 2015 elections. We know what happened in the elections. We know how um, AIT published, um, you know, showed a documentary, which was oh termed as hate speech. But the question is, what is the government's own definition of hate speech? We must also understand that there's a big difference between some, you know, a kind of libel, you know, which the government, the thing is that the government has avenues with which to, you know, check these uh, infractions. Fibroid is a non cancerous tumor that grows in the uterus, the womb of a woman, basically. Yeah. So it's just a, it's not cancer. Is there is, is a benign tumor, it grows in the womb, the uterus. There is no connection between your fibroid place, your uterus, and your anus. It's a big lie. Go and see a doctor, know about medicine, will shrink the fibroid. It's more in black people, it's more in it's more in Africans, it's more it's, it's very close to us. If your auntie, your mother, your sister's having this kind of problem, please, please don't take them to, to the elbow guys. Take them to medical doctors so they can get help. But the government needs to come out and educate Nigerians that this is what hate speech is. It's either it's a libel, it's a slander, it's insult. You see, because if we don't define it, we'll keep going around in circles. And well, if it, it, and it must have been defined for them to have a fine of 500,000 and 5 million uh, going for if you're caught, you know, peddling hate speech. The question is, the law we're talking about now, is it just for the ordinary Nigerians, people who spend their money on social media, or people who pay for adverts in the newspapers? What happens to politicians who use Are you speech? in a roundabout way saying that this um, particular move is to clamp down on critical views? What I would say is this, um, so long as what is being put out there does not cause any problem, I would say government should think twice. Because we know the antecedents of our president, which is why people are scared. We know the antecedents when he was a military ruler. So people are scared. Anything, anything the president does, people do not just think about it, whether it is good for the nation or not. But people just look back to say, this is where who this man has been in the past. This is the handwriting on the wall. This is where he's heading to. So right. it, it, that's where the problem really lies. Let, let's bring Olaiko in. Your thoughts. Is it a clamp down on critical views? Because it, it's, we know that there is a law against these things. We know they've reiterated it repeatedly. Why the repetition every time? Is it, my question still remains though, okay. is it a clamp down? Uh, what we mean by clamp down uh, is something we need to. Uh, really 
put in proper perspective. Views critical of the government. Now, Is I get that you. it? Now, when you talk about hate speech, fake news, uh, libel, they are different things used in different contexts. When you talk about hate speech, for example, using uh, something that has the capacity to, call to, uh, uh, to deride or to demonize an entire uh, ethnic or national group based on be, uh, whether because of their sexual orientation, political views, or any, uh, any other infraction because of a particular political agenda. Or, but when you talk about fake news, fake news is another thing entirely. Publishing thing, uh, news that is not true with a deliberate intention to achieve some uh, perceived end. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, when you talk about these things within the context of freedom of speech, now Nigeria operates a democracy, and democracy is, uh, uh, is premised on the fact that people should have the freedom of expression to express them. That's what makes us humans anyway, because we really can suppress speech. But however, this is the key. If you don't regulate, the word is regulation. It's not clamp down now. When you, the, even the, every profession, we have to look at media in, as a profession. Every profession is regulated either by law or by act. Now, the media, does it have regulation? What makes media a profession, a profession in the first instance? Because there are regulations to follow. Do you understand what you are saying now? Now, in this case of hate speech, hate speech is dangerous. Not just to the society, to national security. We saw what happened in Rwanda in 1994. Now, when the matter, after we are all uh, uh, aware of what happened, radio, television, Del Mil Collins, RTLN, was actually responsible for propagating. And that is because most Rwandans have access to radio. Not many of them could afford a TV. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And that was why the uh, genocide just within three months, 800,000 people died in that situation. That's also, the radio uh, communication was also responsible, partly for Hitler's propaganda during the Second World War that led to the death of over six, uh, about six million Jews. Now, if you, the, the case of Rwanda is still going on. Many of uh, the editors of radio, uh, radio uh, television, Del Milkolinis, are answering for their roles in the genocide. None of them was on the streets killing anybody. None of them was on the streets. Nobody saw anybody, any of them, any of the editors with a gun. But hey, they are answering for their role in the death so of some, over so you're all, But basically what you're trying to explain is that there must be some sort of control yes. so that your rights does not infringe on the other person's yes, rights. And, okay. and, and this is it. Because there is a Yoruba proverb that says, Bikonduban fenilefe aki jorimadu. That is, if freedom, for you can't take freedom for liberty. They're not the same. Because if there's freedom, but you are not to eat what is forbidden. Do you understand what you're okay, saying? Okay, so, let, let's, let's make a distinction and maybe just get some sort of uh, understanding. Which is more perversive in your opinion in today's Nigeria? Hate speech or fake news? Because sometimes it seems we use these words interchangeably without actually knowing which is which. Uh, let me come to you, please. Well, you see, the thing, when it comes to hate, the, 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 the underlying problem of hate speech is that it hits at the fabric of people's sensitivity. A country can actually boil as a result of hate speech and cannot boil as a result of fake news. People are good at differentiating what is fake news and what is hate speech. Hate speech, most times, hate speech is tailored towards religion, ethnicity. Now, fake news, I mean, you could use it as a comedic jibes. You could, you could just, you know, people will know that, oh, it is fake. But, you know, it's like when we had the issue of headsmen, Nigeria was at the precipice of breaking up. Why? Because everything that happens, a particular sect is looked up to. So even people who were not headsmen wore the uniform of headsmen and started perpetuating crime. So hate speech is very, very dangerous. It is the worst thing that can happen to a, to a nation. Okay. It is something that should be called like a cancer. No, okay. I, we actually have I, to I, move on. Okay, just okay I was trying to, uh, because yeah. when people, t yes, it's not correct to use both 
in the same uh, context, hate speech and fake news. Like he rightly said, you can talk about satire. Uh, what's it called? Uh, I think it's Sunday Diary that usually writes uh, satire. Most of the things he writes are just uh, an echo of what is fake, but you can actually relate with it based on what is happening. But hate speech, and, uh, even the media, just the way uh, a bank will not stand fraud is the same way the media cannot stand hate speech. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So both of them cannot go pari So A nation cannot survive uh, uh, hate speech. It's not okay. a good thing. And the, 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 this conversation is coming because um, Mr. Lai Mohammed um, had a conversation with online publishers. And his focus was on broadcasters. And uh, he talked about the approval by the president of a committee to review the National Broadcasting Code for stiffer penalties. And one of the things that um, was said there was Penalties for violators of the NBC code will be stiffer than ever uh, before. What is your opinion, basically? What do you expect from this committee that is going to review as regards hate speech and fake news? I am against particularly uh, coming up with stiffer penalties. We really don't need it. But what I think we should do is that the media itself should do a reflection uh, a kind of introspection about what has happened. How did the media get to this point? Where you begin to demonize entire tribes, for example, for crimes some people commit. During the, uh, what's it called, the uh, farmers and headsmen conflict, and I did a, a study on it at some point, most of the reportage has nothing to do with the headsmen. But there is this general consensus as a result of the agenda setting the, uh, uh, theory of the media to demonize this entire tribe, to you know, make it look like Fulani headsmen are responsible for everything that was happening in Nigeria. To the extent that, in, uh, I think in Makodi in 2017, a group of uh, uh, Fulani were just going on their own. They were not even headsmen. They were attacked in a bus as a response to what was going on in Benue at the time. Do you understand what I'm So these kind of things and these trends are very, very dangerous. Not only uh, uh, for us as a people, but for everything, uh, for, for us, for what we represent as a multicultural. We're indicting the media in this instance. That have they failed, in your opinion, in, in, that, in trying that to regard, manage? That's why I said the media should come you know, to do an, a, a retrospection should be self regulated no, I, I, I think I think when we talk about the media, we need to be sure of, you know, to be certain of which group of media we're talking about. Now, when I say media now... Because, because, I'm, no, sorry, because bloggers, for me, are not media. Yes. They are not the media, and they, these are the people... But today, cause, when you talk, when you cause, talk about the media, it's a combination of everything online. you find on the internet and broadcast. Now, now I'm, I'm even coming. Let me, conventional let me. televisions are on social media, yes. conventional radio stations are on social media. It's a tool that is used you, by all and sundry. Even when, these when, days, when I'm, they, coming, I'm coming, sorry. Even these days, you will see uh, the mainstream media picking news from WhatsApp groups, <laughs> picking news from Twitter. It's okay, happened. but let, let's Look at get the case the of point. Hold on. Let, let, let's get the point he was trying to clarify before. Don't, don't lose your thoughts. No, let's the, get the what point I'm trying to clarify is that we have mainstream media. We also have um, what I'll call mushroom media because they are not media. Yes. The social media. Let's we need to be very careful. Yes. If Nigeria would go up in flames, it's not going to come from the mainstream media. It's going to come from social media, especially WhatsApp. The kind of things you see on WhatsApp, sometimes when something is posted on WhatsApp and you read it, you'll be asking yourself, how did this news or this his, thing his, come His up? narrative, though, was, was more on the media reportage of the Fulani. And he is saying that the media was creating a narrative saying that it's the Fulanese. That were responsible for, for all the crimes. No, no, no. I want to, yes, so I want to, I want to disagree on that. Okay. okay. Because while that was going on, I took time as well to do a lot of research as well. And I found out that most of the news you find that the mainstream media uses have already been used on social media. Yes. So the mainstream media at a point, the, the, see, this is where we have a problem with media okay. in Nigeria. The mainstream media is asleep. They've gone comatose. You, your boats are very, well, you are trying no, different said, no, 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 like. no, no, we're not, we're not. We, 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 what I'm trying to say is that they've gone asleep. Formally, you know, I mean, it's the duty of the mainstream media to go for news. Yes. Investigative journalism. But these days they don't. 
So what they wait is, they wait for something to appear on Twitter, they, took, they take it the next day, and they make it the headline. That's exactly what I'm saying. Which is totally, totally unacceptable. So okay. when we talk of media, we need to define which of the media we're looking at. Okay, okay. we have very let limited go, time. Okay. Let's, let me, let's okay. really... Okay, I think I was... Okay. So in this case, we need to really have a self-regulating mechanism within the media itself, within the Nigerian media. Now, we, yes, you mentioned investigation, uh, investigative journalism. These are things, we, these are what 21st century journalism demands. I saw uh, an undercover re, uh, report of uh, uh, Ikoi prison. I said, these are things the media should be coming up with. Not okay, just, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. You both have, the, I, I, I might be wrong, but what I'm getting from you is that the fake news and hate speech are not good. They are existing, right? Yes. And we need to be conscious of them. So what, in your opinion, is its effect on our democracy? Because sometimes you say it's dangerous, yeah, it's, it can destroy, it can do this, it can do that. In specific terms, what are the likely chances that this could maybe destroy a society? It is already destroying the Nigerian society. Thyroid is a non cancerous tumor that grows in the uterus, the womb of a woman basically yeah so it's just a it's not cancer it's there is it's a benign tumor it grows in the womb the uterus there is no connection between your fibroid place your uterus and your anus it's a big lie go and see a doctor know about medicine will shrink the fibroid it's more in black people it's more in it's more in africans it's more it's, it's very close to us if your auntie your mother your sister's having this kind of problem please please don't take them to, to the alba guys take them to medical doctors so they can get help. Let us, let us, wow. it is see, do you know that these days people are scared, you know, when they see people carrying cows, people run away. They don't want to even know who these people are. It's because of what has been put out there. Headsmen, they kill people. They destroy farms. They take land. They take land. And then I keep asking, how would you come and take somebody's land without the person's permission? Even if you bring all the whole soldiers to a village, the people will run, they will still come back. So hate speech, the problem we've had in Nigeria, which, which I will keep saying is that the, the, the emergence of hate speech is not from the people. It is the politicians. They are using it for their own selfish gains selfish interest and okay. when the government says they want to clamp down or they want to make a stiffer laws let them also realize that they themselves when they put out a speech who punishes them so the law should cover everybody. everybody now but, but interestingly when i I, uh, I kind of agree with what he's saying but interestingly when you talk about laws uh, particularly within the context uh, that we have laws are meant to be made uh, for the good of the people. That's at, at least uh, based on 40, section 47 of the uh, 1999 constitution. Now, in making this regulation, the NBC code has always been there. Uh, the uh, broadcasting code has always been there. But we see a lot of people violating it. We see a lot just because, you know, in Nigeria, uh, implementing the law, enforce, the uh, enforcement of laws, is very, so you, can, you can even politicize the uh, enforcement of law, as we saw in the case of AIT, you know, and uh, MD. So when we are talking about hate speech, nobody, it's not something a society should tolerate. Just it's not, you, you can't tell me, for example, you can't demonize my entire uh, tribe or my entire religion or my entire uh, 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 occupation. And expect me to, I may not, yes, my, my tribe or my occupation can be, they are, they are bad doctors, they are bad teachers. Pirate, the pirates you see today, many of them were ex-sailors. Do you understand what I'm trying? But sailing is an honorable profession. It's a humble profession. It's a noble profession. But the fact that pirates were ex-sailors doesn't mean that sailors are bad people. Are you getting my point now? But we create a situation in the media that, oh, um, uh, headsmen, uh, oh, anytime you see them, like you, like you were saying, are bad people. Okay, let's 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 see whether in the short time that we have if we can, you know, learn more, and that will have to do with fact checking. 
everybody's a journalist now. You don't need like <laughs> a special degree. <laughs> All you need is a smartphone, basically. But again, there are some tenants that you know you cannot do away with. How can the ordinary man who has no training, journalism training, go online and fact check information that is shared on WhatsApp group, on Facebook, and all of that. What steps should they check to know that this is actually real news? Well, I think, you see, um, each time we talk about people being carried along, people being educated, people knowing what they should do, it comes back to the National Identification Agency. That is one organ in government that has gone comatose, that is doing nothing. It is their duty, because they, 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 people are employed on, in that agency, people are paid salaries at the end of the month. It is their duty to go out and educate them. That's why they call them National Orientation Agency. They should be able to orientate people, educate people. I mean, if you see a news, for instance, you see a news you're not sure of, you must apply common sense to know that I can't put this thing out. And you know, when you put up something that you're not sure of and you say copied, when you get arrested, they say, okay, where did you copy it from? You not find out that it's, 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 it's a chain that has no end. So before you put something out, before you tweet something out, you must be sure of what you're putting out. You must be able to say, I can beat my chest and defend this. Quick thought in one second, if you can. Now, <laughs> when you talk about, when you talk about fact checking, it's a whole lot, actually. Even many journalists uh, in the age of social media that want to really f be fast with the news because you want to keep pace. Because at this rate, of the rate at which social media transmits news is faster than what conventional uh, uh, media can actually cope with. That is one of the things that, fact, that makes fact checking pretty difficult. And you can't expect a common man to go that route. Uh, to in this day. Well, but there are very simple steps. Very simple steps, but how many people even, even among educated people, look at somebody like Aldo Makori, for example, who tweets uh, a news he got from his driver who was not even on the scene. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And he got arrested for it he still. Do you understand? Then it's very easy to politicize some of these issues. All right, people should be careful. Hate very, very speech careful. and um, fake news are with us. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts with Thank us. You very much. You're welcome. All right, we'll go for a short break, and when we return, we will be discussing the new deputy governor of Kogi State and the ambush of Musawada, the People's Democratic Party PDP governorship candidate in a forthcoming elections to stay with us.